Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church, Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder. Why? Because every day we have covenanted to come together, unpack God's Word, and have some meaningful moments with the Master. This entire week, I want you to focus with me on one of the most inspirational chapters in the entire Bible, and that is the fourth chapter of the Book of Philippians, Paul's love letter to the church in Philippi of Macedonia. The fourth chapter is the final chapter. It's the climactic chapter. And we find in that chapter some of the most inspirational lessons and teachings that you will ever find in the entire Word of God. And since we're going to focus our attention on Philippians chapter 4, this entire week, and I hope you'll join us every day, because we're going to talk about something critically important, and that is how to, how to get your mind to mind during a pandemic. How to make your mind mind, or how to control your thinking so that you will have good mental health during this pandemic. And what is important about this teaching is that it's not only for the pandemic, but it's for all of the crises and challenges that you will have in life. Whenever you have a challenge, whenever you have adversity, your mind can go haywire. And as a person think, if so is he, so is she. So you want to get your mind to mind. In other words, you want to have control over the way you think, which is another way of saying you want to have good mental health during whatever vicissitudes come your way. I once heard that great preacher out of Richmond, Virginia, the great Dr. Lance Watson, what a great man of God is Dr. Watson, say this. He said, you don't want to lose your mind during difficult times because you're going to need your mind when those difficult times are over. And I believe that Philippians chapter four, the entire chapter helps us and gives us principles on how to mind your mind. And each day this week, I'm going to give you a different principle. In fact, you're going to get seven different principles this entire week from Philippians chapter four. Now on Saturday, which is the climax, I'm going to give you two on Saturday because we're going to have seven principles. And if you get these principles, these are what you have to do, a punch list of things you have to do in order to get your mind to mind during a pandemic, during any crisis that you have. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 gives us the first principle. May you always be joyful in your union with the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. And here's the principle. If you want to get your mind to mind during a pandemic, if you want to have good mental health, then do this. Remember to rejoice in the Lord. And Paul says it twice. He's like, let, let me get it to you twice. He says, always be joyful. And then he says, I said again, rejoice. Now, some of you will say, well, that's easy for Paul to say. I mean, Paul doesn't know my circumstances. Paul doesn't know what I have been through. See, Corona and this COVID-19 pandemic, well, it has put many people in some very difficult situations. Corona means school closings. Corona means that people who had been playing, had been planning to play football and basketball in their senior year, didn't get to play their senior year. Corona means the cancellation of a prom. It means the postponement of a wedding. It means for some people severe isolation. It means for some people job loss. It means sickness. And yes, Corona means for so many thousands, it means death. This is what Corona means. And so you're saying, you don't know, Paul, you don't know what my situation is. Well, Paul would push back against you and say, well, let me tell you about my situation. I'm in jail. I'm in prison. Not even a, that's, that's a polite way of saying he was in a dungeon. 
and Paul has enemies who are making difficult life difficult for him while he's in this dungeon. And there's a great possibility that Paul will be executed. He's living with the great possibility that he will die. But yet, he says, the way I'm maintaining mental health, the way I'm getting my mind to mind is that I'm always being joyful in the Lord. He's finding joy in the Lord. And notice he says, may you always be joyful in your union with the Lord. The reason we don't have joyful joy, and let me give you a definition of joy. Joy is the peace that God gives us in all situations, in all circumstances, regardless of what we're going through. Someone said that joy is this, J-O-Y. Someone said, Jesus, others, yourself. That's not what joy is, Jesus, others, and yourself. Joy is J, Jesus, uh, the Y is you, and the zero is a, the, 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 the uh, O is a zero. It's a zero. So joy is Jesus, zero, you. Don't let anything zero come between Jesus and you. Now, the reason we don't have joy is because we're finding our joy or we're seeking our joy in things we can lose. Many of us this way rejoice. We, we, will, we will read this or our life reflects it this way. May you always be joyful in your union with your job. It doesn't say your union with your job. It doesn't say your union with your business. It doesn't say your union with your friends. It does not say your union with your health. It says, be joyful in your union with the Lord. Why? Because anything you put in this equation other than the Lord is something you can lose. If you put health for Lord, well, what happens when you lose it? There goes your joy. If you put your relationship for Lord, what happens when you lose that relationship, there goes your joy. When you put Lord in the equation and you're rejoicing in the Lord, then that means you can have joy always. Why? Because the Lord will never leave you and the Lord will never change. Everything in life changes. But the Lord is what theologians call immutable changeless. The Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God wants to give you his joy, that peace, that joy. John chapter 15, verse 11 says this, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. And only when you are in union with Jesus Christ can your joy be complete. Now, he says rejoice back in Philippians 4 and verse 4. Paul says rejoice. I, I, I may you always be joyful. It's a verb. It's something that you've got to do. What does that mean, to be joyful? Well, it means telling your mind some things. You've got to do something. And this is what you tell your mind. You've got to tell your mind this, that God sees and God cares. I don't care what's happening in my life. I rejoice knowing that if no one else sees and if no one else cares, the Lord sees and the Lord cares about me. And that makes all the difference in the world because the Lord has the power to do something about any situation we find ourselves in. The Lord sees and the Lord cares, and that's what I rejoice in. Paul's in jail, but he's confident that the Lord sees his circumstances and the Lord cares about his circumstances, and that's what causes us to rejoice. You're unemployed, you can't pay your bills, the Lord sees, the Lord cares. You're sick, the Lord sees, the Lord cares. You, you've got too many burdens on you. You've got to be everything to all people, and it's only just one of you, and no one seems to be lifting you up as you're having to lift everybody up. The Lord sees, 
and the Lord cares. You soak your mind in that fact. The Lord sees and the Lord cares and you rejoice in that. And then secondly, you rejoice in this, that as bad as things are, God specializes in bringing something good out of something bad. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 3 says this, to all who mourn, are you mourning in, in Louisville, in Cincinnati, in Chicago, wherever you are, in Los Angeles, in Atlanta, to all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes. So he'll take away your ashes, which means mourning, and he'll give you a crown. God can make something good come out of something bad. And if you want to mind your mind, if you want to have good mental health, the first of the seven principles that we find in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, is this. Rejoice in the Lord. And if he says rejoice in the Lord, here in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, if he says rejoice in the Lord, that means that's something you can do. It's not something someone else can do for you which means you are just as happy as you choose to be. That's it. Make the choice to rejoice. That is foundational for good mental health to get your mind to mind during this pandemic. Let's pray together. Our Lord and our God, we, we thank you for your word for the truth of your word, for the practicality of your word, that it is applicable and usable. But don't let us be hearers. Help us to be doers. Help us to rejoice in our union with you because everything else changes, but you're immutable. You're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We find our joy in you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so very much for being with us on this powerful point to ponder. And don't forget that we are journeying through this fourth chapter. Perhaps uh, you're listening and God is really moving upon your heart. You've been with, with us for some time now on these powerful points to ponder and you don't have a church home. Everybody needs a church home and you can be a digital disciple and a part of our online church and it's growing. So if you want to be a part of our online church, I want you to do something. I want you to contact us here at St. Stephen Baptist Church. Email us at info sclive.org. Email us at info sclive.org. Become a part of St. Stephen Baptist Church. And as we go, we say it every time we meet, and that is don't forget to stay safe. Stay safe. Stay sane. Rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice in the Lord. And if you can, stay home. God bless you. See you tomorrow.